Hello everyone, my name is Devashesh and this is an Ed Sharpner production. In this video, I'm going to tell you all the questions that were asked to me in the NSG Studies interview 2015. We took a poll and we asked everybody recently on the channel which video would you like and everybody voted for NSG Studies interview video. So here it is. I'll be putting this video in English so that all the non-Hindi speakers will also understand how to go about these kind of interviews. Note that Energy Studies IIT Delhi is an interdisciplinary department and my background is from Instrumentation Engineering. I'll tell you all the questions and at the end I'll put some of my tips as well so that you become successful in such kind of interviews. So watch till the end. Okay, so let me start from the start. So when I was applying for all the IITs, mostly old IITs, I was looking through every department and I was applying everywhere where I was eligible as a candidate. And so in 2015, I attended the interviews mostly in IIT Madras, IIT Kharagpur, IIT Kanpur, IIC Bangalore, and I was failing everywhere. Note that this is the interview where I actually got the admit and I actually completed my MTech degree from this department. So this is the interview where I got my success. I was doing a job side by side. And so I used to go for the interviews when and if the interviews are scheduled on the weekends. For this particular interview of energy studies, this interview was scheduled at Thursday and I did not have a holiday. So I worked half a day and then I asked my boss if I could leave. I, I took the leave, but when I came home, I was so tired. I was not at all in the mood to go, but for some reason I went because I did not really know if I'd be successful in this interview since I had no idea about what energy studies does and how they are as a department but it was still attractive because that is IIT Delhi and if this interview goes well, I could be a part of a great institute. So I backed myself. I decided when I am in Metro traveling from Gurgaon to Delhi, I will read about energy studies and I will prepare a bit. And then I went for the interview. So when I reached at the department, of course, I was already intimidated by the great campus and of course, all the peers that there were who were there for the interview. Everybody had a great rank, everybody had great score and everybody looked very sharp and very confident. It's very possible that you could be nervous, but things get better, so trust me. So when I went to the department, there were different panels that were taking the interview. Like I said, energy studies is an interdisciplinary department. So candidates from different branches had applied there, right from civil, mechanical, electrical, electronics, instrumentation, etc. So one panel of professors were taking interviews of mechanical and civil engineering and one panel was taking the interview of electrical and the third panel was taking the interviews for instrumentation, electronics and telecommunication. So I was waiting outside and there was one guy sitting just besides me and he was working in Cognizant. We started chatting and he was very brilliant He's, and eventually actually he he became my classmate in energy studies and we became very good friends. If you are watching this interview, Aditya, <laughs> hi from my side. Okay, so Aditya and I were chatting about what could happen inside, but eventually it helped me calm my nerves because he was also working like me. He was also coming from his job, asking his boss. So eventually we shared different things, whatever that we had read about energy studies. So we shared a bit of knowledge. So it's always a good thing to discuss with different people that are coming there. Some people avoid that kind of thing. That's a subjective matter, but I think personally, it's okay to discuss with whoever have come there for the interview. Sharing of the knowledge is always great. So don't shy away from it. Then there came my time and I went inside. Once you enter inside, you see a lot of professors sitting like in a half circle. Everybody is sitting comfortably in their chairs. They were drinking tea and they offered me tea. They asked me, okay, you are Devashish, right? Come sit here and have, have tea with us. So it was really calming for me because I was very nervous. I did not have any idea what I was doing. I had no idea how the questions will be and I had no idea how will the professors react. But it was really cool and it was really great to see that human side of all those professors because I've heard a lot about IIT in professors. They are intimidating. They could be ruthless. But that's a side that you get to see in interviews. They really help you calm your nerves. So don't worry about it. Only professors, whoever is taking your interview will help you calm your nerves. Now, these are the questions they actually asked me. So the first question was while drinking tea, they asked me, so introduce yourself, Devashish. 
I started like my name is Devashish Fadnis and I have completed my B.Tech graduation from Government College of Engineering Amravati blah 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 and I have completed my bachelor's in instrumentation engineering and currently I am working as a control system design engineer 3 in Lower Daniel, Gurgaon etc. So actually I stopped or I finished my answer at my job description. Now the interesting thing was the next question that they asked me was about my job profile. Now I want you to stop here and think about it. Whenever somebody asks you a question, it's really good and it's really smart to finish your answer at the topic which you feel is you are most comfortable with. I was very comfortable describing my job profile because I was working there for complete year and I was very comfortable describing about it. I was very confident. I knew that whatever I am going to tell them, there is nothing that probably go wrong. These are always scoring questions for you when they ask you about your job profile. So it is a really great thing to finish off. So if you are not doing a job, you could finish at your, let's say your major project. If you are very comfortable with, you could finish at a particular seminar or workshop that you did, which you are comfortable talking. So always finish your answers at the point where you are most comfortable with. Now the next question was, so what do you actually do in your job? So I described them what, what I actually do and they were very impressed by the kind of work that I used to do in the company. It's a plus that you have a professional experience entering into MTech degree. So remember that. Later, they asked me why I was willing to leave that job in order to pursue MTech. That was a natural question. Always remember if you're doing a job, if you're appearing for MTech interviews, they will ask you this question. Why do you want to leave your job and get the MTech done? My answer was that I wanted to be entering into academics. I wanted to be a professor and wanted to pursue PhD, which I didn't do, but that is the answer that I gave them. So it's always a safe answer that you're going to do academics because MTech really has value if you want to enter into academics. Then they asked me how many years I was working in my company. This was just an informative question for them, but it could lead to two kinds of things. If you are working for many, many years and then coming for MTech, they could think that you were preparing for a different kind of an exam and this is just a step to that kind of a thing. Right now, there are red flag against people preparing for exams while they do their MTech in such departments. So if you are preparing for let's say IAS or IES, it's better to mask that particular feeling for professors. Let them know that you could not leave that job because of some problem but you really wanted to pursue MTech for let's say job upgradation through this or you really wanted to pursue MTech in that department. So there has to be some solid reason if there is a lot of gap from your graduation to the MTech entry. But that does not matter a lot. But just be prepared with some kind of solid answer to mask that feeling that you're preparing for a different kind of an exam. The next question was about my department and the energy studies. They asked me if how will I use instrumentation engineering in energy studies? What is the requirement of instrumentation engineer in the energy studies department? I said instrumentation is all about measurement and control. And if you measure and control things well, your efficiency increases and energy efficiency is one of the talking points in energy studies. I don't really remember that kind of a question, but that was surely there that they asked me about few instruments, few sensors through which I could measure some kind of physical parameters. Then another professor asked me to name any five sources of energy. I started from sun, then I started talking about plants and then bodily energy that is chemical energy and etc. And he said, okay, stop. I understand. Don't worry about it. So that question was put short. Next, one of the professors who was working in nuclear energy asked me if I knew about nuclear energy. I said, I knew a bit about it, sir, but not much. So he asked me specifically if I knew the difference between fusion and fusion. I said, sir, I think fusion is more preferred than fusion, but I did not know more about that. So I told them, sorry, sir, I don't know much more than this. Then one of the other professors asked if I have done any kind of work on renewable energy before. I told them that I did not do any practical work, but I had presented a seminar on renewables and non-renewables in my bachelor's degree. Then the next question was, how many renewable type of sources that you know of? I listed a lot of them like solar energy, wind energy, geothermal energy, again nuclear energy that they said. After listing these kind of sources, the professor asked me if I knew more about geothermal energy. So I said, 
the energy which we utilize because of the temperature difference that we find deep down the earth. They did not push me a lot on this. After that, another professor asked me, what is the most feasible renewable energy source that we can use in India? And my answer was solar energy. They asked me why. Actually, I could not answer that question in English. So I told them, Bharat kark vrutta pe aata hai aur hume solar energy kaafi zada available hai relative to say Europe. I would say if we are talking for whole of India, I think we can really exploit the availability of solar energy. And I also know from the fact, sir, because I also use solar cooker in my home and I know how effective it is. So that was my answer on that. After this question, one of the professors asked me about my major project. My major project was about EEG signals. Of course, they also asked me what is EEG. I explained them that EEG is electroencephalogram signal. So it's basically your brain signals and my project hovered around estimating the frequencies and classifying the frequencies at a particular time using different signal processing techniques and I explained them what kind of signal processing that I have done and I was working on MATLAB so it was reassuring for them that I can work on MATLAB which is a very good tool for engineers and there was a deadlock in my particular project that there was a conclusion that we cannot really find out exact frequency at exact time and it stemmed from the fact of Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So they actually asked me why it was and the answer was sir it's because of Heisenberg uncertainty principle that we cannot actually find out the frequency exact frequency at exact time that was the answer they actually expected. So it helps if you know your project inside out and that was the last question of my interview. Interview really went well. Okay, so the takeaway from this interview is finish your answers where they can ask you more questions and you can really answer them. So like a major project or you could finish your answers at your job profile like I said. Okay, another thing that you must read about the department and the professors which are working in that particular department. I have stressed this point in different kind of my videos but if you visit the website of that department and look at all the research work of all the professors, you will have good idea about what they are actually doing and how can you turn your interview with their particular interests if they match. Everybody likes to hear that whatever they are doing is great and if somebody even utters that thing, you can have great impact on that particular professor. Another takeaway is never reveal to them that you are preparing for some kind of administrative exam they will not select you. In my batch, there were so many people who were preparing for exams and then the department woke up and then they stopped selecting those candidates who they felt are going to prepare for different kind of administrative exams. If you put your answer like this, that you want to pursue PhD and want to go for research and academics in energy studies or let's say any particular department for that matter, they will be more impressed. Again, the next thing is that it's okay to say that you do not know things only say whatever you know if you do not know about it just frankly tell them that sir sorry i do not know again another question could be is it important and compulsory to talk in english of course it is not you can tell them sir i am not comfortable answering in english may i please answer in hindi of course there are not a lot of professors who have problem with hindi but there could be some professors who only speak english but that's fine. You can always translate bit for them as long as you can safely communicate with them. In order to increase your selection chances, read as much as possible for that particular department. Prepare your answers for why this department and why are you doing MTech. This is very very important if they ask you. Again, I have told you in different many interviews they ask you about your favorite subject. So always prepare that one subject very very well. In this particular interview they did not ask me about my favorite subject but the more stress was about my work that I do in my job profile and whatever I have done in my major project. If they ask you that whether you have any questions for them do not lose this opportunity and ask them about any research project that they are conducting. Also you can ask them about the history of the department if you don't know about it. And also you could ask them what are the expectations from the department for a candidate who works in a specific branch like I could have asked if sir what is the expectation from an instrumentation engineering graduate in energy studies. Of course that was the question also they asked me but it is very important if you ask them their expectations from the candidates like yourself. 
I hope this video was very helpful for you and I am sure the questions will be asked around same lines. So prepare well, all the very best for your interviews. If you liked this video, watch another video where we have put my all MTech interview experiences, whichever, whatever went wrong. So watch that as well. Share this video as much as possible and we will be bringing in more content for you. So do not forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed. मिलेंगे जल्दी ही तब तक के लिए ज्ञान दीते रहिए